The textbook is Statistics for Economics for Class 11th. This is Chapter 2, Collection of Data. Dear friends, you have already studied about the meaning of statistical data and its use in the study of economics. Today, we will discuss about the types of data and the methods of collection of data. Friends, if you are planning to study an economic or social problem, we would require data on certain variables. For example, if we want to study how the demand for a certain commodity reacts to change in its price, we would require data on quantity demanded of that commodity and its price. We will also need the price of the commodity in several markets and at different points of time. We may collect our own data by conducting a market survey or an inquiry into household budgets or use the data from published sources. The data is mainly of two types, primary data and secondary data. The data collected by conducting a statistical inquiry or a field investigation are called primary data as they are based on first-hand information. Thus, the data collected by the investigator herself or himself are primary data. If the data have been collected and processed, that is, scrutinized, tabulated and represented diagrammatically by someone other than the investigator, they are called secondary data. Thus, the published data are necessarily secondary data. Some important sources of secondary data are Census of India, Reserve Bank of India Bulletin, Economic Surveys, etc. Thus, the data are primary to the source that collects and processes them for the first time and secondary for the sources that later use such data. Use of secondary data saves time and cost. The primary data may be collected either by census method or the method of complete enumeration where all individual units in the region are covered or sampling method where only a fraction of the total population is covered. Collection of primary data the person who plans and conducts the statistical investigation is called the investigator. Those who go out to the field to conduct the actual data are called the enumerators. The respondents provide the actual data by answering the questions in the questionnaire. Now, the question is how we collect the data? We usually conduct a survey by asking questions to gather information from the individuals. It may be noted that whether we adopt the census or the sample method for collecting data, the field work must be carefully planned and organized. Preparation of the questionnaire. The first step in collection of data is the preparation of the questionnaire. Questionnaire is a list of questions prepared by the investigator on the subject of inquiry. While preparing the questionnaire, the following points should be noted. Number 1. The questionnaire should not be very long. A lengthy questionnaire may tire out both the enumerator and the respondent. Number 2. The questions to be included in the questionnaire must be precise and short. Vague or ambiguous questions must be avoided as they would provide inaccurate information. Number 3. The questions should be framed in such a way that they can be cross-checked with other questions in the questionnaire. Number 4. The questions should not involve much arithmetical calculations for the enumerator or the respondent. 
there are mainly three methods of data collection they are personal interview mailing questionnaire and telephonic interview let us discuss the three methods one by one the advantages of the personal interview are that the enumerator can personally explain to the respondent about the objective of the inquiry and importance of the study it helps in getting better cooperation of the respondents and in obtaining accurate answers to the questions in the questionnaire the enumerator can help the respondents in interpreting the questions correctly and recording their answers it saves time of the respondents and keep them in good humor this advantages of the personal interview is that this method is expensive we need a large team of enumerators and spend on their training and travel besides other expenses on food stationery lodging etc now we will discuss the second method of data collection that is mailing questionnaire advantages of mailing questionnaire to the respondents are that it is far more convenient and less expensive this advantages of the method of mailing questionnaire are the respondents may not understand or may miss interpret some questions the respondents may not take enough care to answer all questions correctly the respondent may ignore and not return the questionnaire at all some of the questionnaires may be lost in the mail the method of mailing questionnaires is suitable when it is compulsory by law to file information required in the questionnaire for example sometimes government agencies make it compulsory for banks companies and individuals to supply information to the government now we will discuss about telephonic interview the advantages of telephonic interview are telephonic interviews are cheaper than personal interviews and can be conducted in a shorter time they allow the researcher to assist the respondents by classifying questions they are better in cases where the respondents are reluctant to answer certain questions in personal interviews this advantage of telephonic interview are the difficulty in telephonic access to people in remote areas and difficulty in getting proper connectivity the second step in collection of data is the training of the enumerators training program for the enumerators have to be organized so that they can interpret the questions correctly explain to the respondents the objective of the inquiry and importance of the study they must be trained to be polite in their presentation the next step is to conduct a pilot survey in case it is going to be a large scale field study it is useful initially to conduct a survey on a smaller scale called a pilot survey before launching the large survey the pilot survey helps in following ways it will help to pretest the suitability of the questions to be included in the questionnaire it will avoid any unforeseen problems that might arise during the large scale survey it will facilitate the assessment of the performance of the enumerators and remove any difficulties they may be facing it will give an idea of the time and cost of the actual survey might take it will provide the preliminary idea about certain aspects of the data the census method the census method is also called the method of complete enumeration the essential feature of this method is that every individual unit in the whole population is to be covered we do not select some and leave out others the census of india is carried out once in every 10 years on this basis a house to house inquiry is carried out covering all households in india 
demographic data on birth and death rates and on size and composition of population etc are collected and published by the registrar general most recent population census in india was carried out in 2011 the process of conducting a census involves preparing a questionnaire on the basis of the purpose of the study and then sending out a large team of well-trained enumerators to the respondents in the field to get the questionnaire filled. The data collected by census method is generally voluminous. We must process them into manageable form before drawing any conclusions out of the data. In other words, we must scrutinize the data for any apparent errors, tabulate them suitably and if necessary, present them diagrammatically. However, there may occur various kinds of errors in data collection. Number 1. Errors of measurement. As a very simple example, suppose each student in your class is asked to measure the length of the teacher's table in the classroom. Every student is provided a separate measuring tape. If you compare the measurements taken by the students, you will surely find that the measurements are not identical. The differences in measurements may arise because some students measured up to the nearest of the unit while others measured to the nearest of the tenth place of the decimal. The differences in measurement may also occur due to the differences in the measuring tapes due to the manufacturing defects. Some students may also be careless. In a household survey, suppose we want to know the household expenditure on various items of consumption. If we ask the head of the household about the monthly expenditure on food, we are bound to get only an approximate figure. Similarly, suppose we want to collect data on prices of oranges. We know that prices vary from shop to shop and from market to market. They also vary according to their quality. Which price do we take? We can at best take some kind of an average price. Number 2. Errors due to mishandling of the questionnaire. The enumerator or the respondent may misunderstand or misinterpret some question in the questionnaire. Since the scale of operation is large in such survey, a large team of enumerators has to be employed. All enumerators may not be equally efficient. Some careless ones may not take their job seriously even after intensive training. Recording mistakes. The enumerators or the respondent may commit errors in recording data. For example, he or she may record 13 instead of 31 and so on. Sometimes the handwriting is so bad and unclear that the tabulator may misread the recorded answer while transferring data to files or computer. Errors of non-response. These errors arise when the respondent refuses to fill up the questionnaire or the respondent is not available even after repeated visits of the enumerator. The magnitude of the errors of non-response will generally be large if the questionnaire are mailed to the respondent and not carried to him or her personally by the enumerator. The respondent in that case may not care or feel too lazy to return the questionnaire duly filled. In many cases, the questionnaire may be lost in the mail. Arithmetical errors. If some questions require a little of arithmetical calculations, there is a possibility of such errors. For example, if the question is, what was the expenditure on food last month? The head of the household will have to add expenditures on rice, wheat, salt, sugar, milk, etc. 
and also on fruits and vegetables. The errors may occur in recollecting the items, their prices and adding up. The magnitude of the errors mentioned above will tend to be large in a field survey by complete enumeration or census method because the errors will tend to accumulate and it may be difficult to provide adequate training, coordinate and supervise the work of large team of enumerators. The cost of data collection by census method will be high as a very large team of enumerators have to be trained and their field work has to be coordinated and supervised. It will require lot of expenditure on travel of enumerators besides other costs on food, stationery, etc. In many situations, it may not be feasible to carry out a census at all. For example, suppose we want to estimate the total amount of timber available in a forest or the total amount of fish available in a river or the total number of birds in a sanctuary, etc. We can at best obtain an estimate in such cases based on the sample data. Thus friends, we have today discussed the census method of data collection. We have also discussed the errors that may arise during the course of data collection and the cost involved in such collection of data. We will in the next episode discuss about the sample method of data collection. Thank you.